Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another What's for Dinner. Okay, so this week we are starting out with a meal picked by Stephen because today is his birthday. He chose this Asian pork tenderloin, so we're gonna get started on that in just a second. You see that box back there behind me on the counter? That is a cake that his um, work always sends him every single year by Creative Cakery, I think is the name. So every year he gets a cake on his birthday from his work, so that was delivered, so that'll be for dessert this evening. It's kinda nice, I don't ever have to make a cake. <laughs> but here's the ingredients for tonight's dinner. So we've got this pork tenderloin. It's a little over a pound. It's perfect for the three of us. And here is the ingredients for the marinade. We're going to go ahead and make the marinade and stick it in the fridge and let it marinate all afternoon. It is one o'clock now, 1.30. We've got brown sugar, soy sauce, honey. It calls for ginger, like ground ginger, but we're just gonna use this ginger paste and garlic powder. And this is just a butcher box pork tenderloin. Really excited to cook it up. Unfortunately, we won't be grilling it tonight simply because it is pouring rain at the moment. We're supposed to be having some really strong thunderstorms move through this evening. So the recipe that I found said you could grill it or put it in the oven. So we're gonna go oven route this time. I'm sure it would be even better on the grill. Okay, let's make our marinade. We've got honey here. I need two tablespoons. I also need two tablespoons of brown sugar. I need a third a cup of soy sauce. I am gonna measure this one just because I don't wanna, I don't wanna mess that up. Well, isn't that funny? That's exactly what I had left in this bottle. I mean, exactly. I need a half a teaspoon of ground ginger, but like I mentioned, I'm gonna be using this paste. And then lastly, I need a teaspoon of garlic powder. Let's just whisk all of this together. Now I'm just gonna put my pork tenderloin here in this gallon size bag. The trick here is to only pour half of this marinade over top. We're gonna save the other half for basting the pork tenderloin while it's in the oven or while it's on the grill if you're doing it on the grill. Okay, this is gonna go in the fridge for like four to eight hours. It's gonna be more like four hours since it's already one o'clock here, but this is gonna go in the fridge and then dinner will just be ready to go in the oven. Okay, so I just poured the remaining marinade here into this little container. I'm gonna put a lid on it and stick it in the fridge until later. So I got this out of the fridge. It's been in there for about four hours. We're just going to put it in this baking dish here. I've got my oven preheated to 350. Oh, it smells good. I'm just gonna pour the rest of the juices over top. And then remember, I've got the other half of this marinade in the fridge. We will baste it about halfway through. Okay, it's going in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. You just want the internal temperature to reach 145. Okay, so it's been in there a little over half of the amount of time and I'm just gonna add some fresh marinade on top as well. little extra. I'm going to save some to pour over at the very end. Okay, let's put this back in the oven. Funny story about our sides tonight. You see we've got American style potato salad and coleslaw and of course we're having the Asian pork tenderloin so it doesn't seem to really fit together but let me explain to you why. We were supposed to take these to our small group get together picnic right after church yesterday. We forgot them. We left them here in the fridge. And it's a 15 minute drive there and a 15 minute drive back. So right after second service, we were supposed to have a picnic. So I just ran to Ingalls and got some more 
for our small group get together, but that meant we still had these sitting in our fridge here at home. So I was like, well, we won't waste it. It won't go to waste. It'll just American style potato salad and coleslaw goes great with Asian pork tenderloin, right? Okay, I did have to bake this for just a few more minutes, like 10 to 12 more minutes, I think. We're gonna let it rest here on this plate before we cut into it. tenderloin is extremely tender yeah. very juicy it's not dry by any stretch of imagination you gotta dip we dip you dip i dip you dip we dip when i dip you dip we dip we did we did we dipped <laughs> boom i would say he likes it mm-hmm mm-hmm are we gonna have one or two thumbs up? Oh, we got two. All right. Okay, y'all, so we just got this out of the fridge. This is the company that sends us the cake, or Steven's company uses this company to send us a cake every year, and we always get the chocolate. We don't get to choose this, they choose it for us. The chocolatey chocolate chip is so good. Okay, see, it comes with this little bow that you put in there, and then it even comes with this really long candle that I'm gonna light, and we're gonna sing happy birthday to Steven. Steven, happy birthday to you. <laughs> good morning. I say good morning because today is a crock pot meal. I am going to thinly slice this red onion to get started. Today's crock pot meal is called French onion pot roast. I'm pretty excited about this one. I'm always looking for something new to do with a pot roast. One of my favorite, and I'm sure one of your favorites, is Mississippi Pot Roast. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? But in order to find a new recipe to share with y'all, I found this one and I thought I would give it a try. Now in this small bowl, I'm just gonna mix the rest of our ingredients that we need for now. I need a fourth a cup of tomato sauce, one cup of beef broth. I need about three cloves of garlic minced. I need a tablespoon of, it calls for white wine vinegar, but I have red wine vinegar, so that's what I'm gonna use. And a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, the dub sauce. I said it really good that time, I'm impressed. And you can use either fresh thyme or dried thyme like I'm going to. I'm gonna use about a half a teaspoon. And then the recipe calls for fresh parsley. I don't even know if I have some on hand. I need to check, but I'm gonna put some dried parsley in here, and I think the fresh parsley is supposed to go on top at the end, but we're gonna add the flavor in as well. Not a lot, just a little bit. Okay, let's whisk this together. All right, that's it. Now let's go grab our chuck rust out of the fridge and get it all put into the slow cooker. On the bottom of our slow cooker, we're gonna add about half of the onions. Now on top of the onions, we're gonna put our chuck roast, and I am going to put some salt and pepper on this. And apparently I didn't read the directions. You're supposed to put half of the sauce over the onion. Now we'll sprinkle the rest of the onions on top and pour the remaining sauce on top. Okay, that's it. Dinner will be ready later today. You can either cook it on high for four hours or you can do like I'm gonna be doing and that's cook it on low for seven hours. Okay, so I've got green beans going here on the stove and then I've got mashed potatoes started in the Instant Pot. I'm not feeling that great today, so I didn't film this portion. However, 
if you want my green bean recipe I have shared it a ton of times here on my channel and I will link it below it's the best way I've found to make green beans Roast beef. Roast beef. It's French onion pot roast. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am, it is. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. I've never had French onion roast beef. Matter of fact, this probably has more flavor in it than any of the roast beefs I've ever had. Wait, even the Mississippi pot even roast? The Mississippi roast. Because Mississippi pot roast, I mean. Cole saying no. You don't think? <laughs> It's got more flavor. Like, it's got more... Uh, I can taste the French onion flavor in this. Yeah. More so than whatever flavoring you put in the Mississippi, Mississippi. pot roast. Okay. I mean, this was really good, but the Mississippi pot roast has the pepperoncinis Yeah. In there. Yeah. Adds that a little bit of a spice. Yep. I so, I could, I could definitely add that in here. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So, next well, time I'll now, do that. Wait now. Wait now. We're about to do something else. What's that? Eat it with some potatoes. Oh, eat it with some chow chow. That's right. His, this was part of his birthday present from his mom. She went to the Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge area and she brought us back a lot of stuff from Apple Barn and then she got him some really hot chow chow. And don't worry, he's the only one that eats this. So yes, he just stuck his fork in it after he had already eaten it, but it's his. <laughs> All right, chow chow. Pain. Pain. We don't want none. It's good. <laughs> if you never had chow chow, you need to try it. I'm not a fan of chow chow, but he loves it. I ain't never had chow chow. You ain't never had it? Nope. Son, you need to try it. I don't know if you want to try that one. That one's extra hot. Mmm. 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 Good dinner? Yes, very much so. All right. I know you were talking, but you didn't do the whole thumbs up thing. I never knew. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna dig in. It's our third meal of the week, which means it's subby supper night. <laughs> so tonight is subby supper. Stephen introduced it. We are having what, babe? Jambalaya. 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 This week's Subby Supper comes from Brenda, and it is another slow cooker meal. It's jambalaya in the slow cooker. I didn't choose it because it was slow cooker. I chose it because jambalaya sounded good. <laughs> Brenda lives in High Point, North Carolina. Church is a big part of her life. She and her husband have been married for 43 years. They have five grown children, and they were a military family, so they moved around a lot. They retired military. She said that she found this recipe when they were stationed in Biloxi, Mississippi. So thank you, Brenda, for sending this in. We're really excited to give it a try, and I love that it's another slow cooker meal because y'all know I have a deep love for using my crock pot. So here's everything we're going to need right now. The only thing that I'm adding in is this jalapeno because y'all know. Um, we'll need rice later. We'll be adding that in a good bit later. All right, we're going to get started by chopping up our veggies. I'm going to use my veggie chopper today. Okay, I just sprayed my slow cooker with some nonstick spray. The first thing I'm going to do is add in some crushed tomatoes. I have a 28 ounce can. I think she said 30 ounces, but this is all I could find was 28 ounces. We also need a four ounce can of tomato paste. This is a little over four ounces and I have most of it left, so I'm just gonna squeeze the rest of this in there. Okay, now we're gonna add in two tablespoons of the dub sauce, wish to share. A can of diced green chilies. 
Let's add in some minced garlic. We need three cups of chicken broth. This is a four cup container, so we'll use about three fourths of it. She said to use about a tablespoon of this Creole seasoning. You could always use more if you want more heat, but since we've already added in some jalapeno, I'm just gonna go with about a tablespoon of it. Let's stir all of this around. Lastly, I've got these thin sliced chicken breasts that are already trimmed and ready to go. We're just gonna place those directly in here. And then we're gonna cook this on low for about two hours. That should cook these chicken breasts since they are so thin. And then after that time, we'll come back in and put in our rice and our smoked sausage and let it cook for another two hours and then dinner will be ready. So let's pop the lid on. I forgot to mention too, at the end of that two hours, I'll take the chicken out and chop it up. Okay, it's been a couple of hours. It just went over to warm. So we're gonna open this up and take our chicken out and cut it up and put it back in. We're also going to slice up this Cajun style andouille sausage. Uh, you can use whatever smoked sausage she didn't spe specify. This is just the one that I chose. You do need 12 ounces, so I'll need this entire thing. And a cup and a half of rice. I've already rinsed it. I'm just letting it drain. Your chicken may not be completely done at this point, and that's okay because it's gonna be going right back in and it's gonna be cooking for two more hours, but you just wanna go ahead and get it cut up into smaller pieces. Okay, so it's all chopped up. It's gonna go back in here, but first I wanna go ahead and add in my rice. So this is a cup and a half of just regular white rice that I've rinsed. She didn't say you have to rinse it, but I always rinse my rice when at all possible. Now let's add in our chicken. And lastly, let's slice this up into like quarter inch pieces and add it. Now that we've got everything added back in, I'm just gonna give it a quick stir and we're just gonna cook this on low for another two hours, two to three hours, just depending. You just wanna check and make sure that your rice gets done. And once it's done, the dish is done. Okay, y'all, it is time for dinner. Steven's gonna go ahead and plate this up for us. Now, let me be really transparent with you. After two hours, the rice was not done for me. I emailed Brenda and she said, it's always done for me, but maybe, you know, crock pots cook at different temperatures. So, um, or, you know, kind of cook differently. So I put it back in for another hour and I changed it to high and it is perfect. Y'all, oh my goodness, this looks good. Mm -hmm. Brenda also mentioned that at the end you could throw in some shrimp and just let it cook, which would not be a bad idea either. It's just me and Steven tonight <laughs> and a lot of food. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. <laughs> Very spicy. Is it? Lots of flavor. Okay. Definitely um, a spicy gumbo. Okay. Oh, really good. Tons of flavor. I love this. This is great. Awesome. Love the sausage flavor in there. It's very rich. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Very, very rich flavor. Definitely get the uh, the Creole seasonings and things, yeah. the spices in there. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna get started. Brenda, this is so good. There's so much flavor packed in here. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. Yes. And we're gonna have a lot of leftovers, so it's a good thing we like it, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's really good. That's it for this week's What's for Dinner. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Also, I wanted to mention that Cole really did love the jambalaya. He had it when he got home later that day and loved it. If you haven't already, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button before you leave. See you next time. Bye. Hi. Hey. <laughs> You're on candid camera. You are on candid camera.
Do you like your mug warmer? Is that what you were saying was cool? I, I, I got the mug warmer. He got a mug warmer as part of his birthday gift. It just came in today, so. Hi. We'll have some something. Jambalaya. Jambalaya. You Is know, it jam or jam? I think it's jam, but I always or say jam. No, I say jam. So when I tried to spell it one time on Google, I typed in J U M, mm -hmm. and it wasn't even suggesting anything. I was like jambalaya. Jam jam. And then I figured out it was J A M. How do they say it down there in Louisiana? <laughs> huh? Uh, 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 southern friends down there in Louisiana. How do y'all say it? I know somebody on here is watching from Louisiana. How do you say it? Our Creole friend. When I dip, you dip, we dip. Gracie likes it too. Well, don't, don't, stop. <laughs> Let go of my finger. Thank you.